Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real, and I'm your host, Bob Gallagher. My guest today is Rosemary Kelleher, founder of Elevate Sales Coaching and Seminars. Welcome to the show, Rosemary. Oh, thanks, Bob. Great to be here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how your real estate career started and how you ended up as a... Uh, a sales coaching and uh, sales coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have all day, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyways, I, after college, I got involved in working at Gillette in downtown Boston. Mm-hmm. And when I was ready to get married and start my family, my um, I realized very quickly that Gillette wasn't, at the time, they've since changed, a very mom-friendly place. So mm-hmm. now we know the world has changed, it has, don't yes. we? So anyways, I made a bet with my husband. We were starting to look for a house, and I said, geez, you know, I think I can do what that agent is doing and sell some houses. I, it's very interesting to me. And my husband says, oh, honey, it'll take a while before you could sell a house, but you could certainly give it a try. Mm. And I thought the freedom and flexibility of being a mom and being able to sell houses here and there would be a good fit for me. Mm -hmm. Well, little did I know that um, once I got into it, there was uh, not as much freedom and not as much flexibility. Mm -hmm. It Real estate truly was a very full-time occupation. But I started on a bet with my husband and my grandmother's wise words to me was everybody needs a real estate professional because everybody that you know, everybody that you'll run into has an address. Mm -hmm. They either own it or they rent it and someday they're going to be a buyer and a seller. So everybody around you will need you. And she turned out through the years to be one of my biggest, truest, biggest advocates Mm -hmm. in my career and in my profession. So within six months, I was rookie of the year. I kept throwing commission checks in my husband's face, and he got a real <laughs> kick out of that, let me tell you. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> bet to lose, right? Yeah, I, I, he was very happy he took that bet. <laughs> it worked out well for him, yes, for sure. Yes, it did. But uh, I became Rookie of the Year, and wow. um, w- within the next couple of years, I I was very goal oriented because there were sales trips, Bob. Mm. So a young mother having the opportunity to go on sales trips for a week and leave the kiddos behind with my husband <laughs> seemed very appealing to <laughs> so me. So that was probably what drove you for the most oh, part. Oh, <laughs> that was a good incentive, let me tell yeah. you. So I did. I traveled all over the world because I was determined to win all of those awards. And, mm-hmm. and I did, and I was very blessed that way. And I was able to fit it into my family life. And throughout my years, about 10 years of transactional real estate, I won all the awards. I was only with two companies. I didn't hop around. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, you know, since went from Jack Conway, which is on the South Shore. Everybody Mm -hmm. remembers Jack and very beloved. And then I went off to Remax and did you know very well that way became a hall of famer and Mm -hmm. met all of the big sales goals and whatnot and it it there was some freedom attached to that for me Mm. um not only the success of of doing well with sales and making the money but the freedom to be able to do things i wanted to do for my family um the other part to it too is that i came from a very big family Mm. which ironically most sales agents that i talked to steer away from family and friends and I kind of just went for it to be Mm. quite honest with you I got talked into going into management and I ended up in Keller Williams managing on the um, in Westwood actually Mm. and uh, fell in love with working with agents and trying to help them to develop the sales skills and strategies that they would need to kind of duplicate my efforts and and some of my results I went on from Keller Williams, did some more work with management and leadership with Remax, and then eventually went on to Ravis, where I helped to build the Concord office from the ground up over in Concord. Um, After I did that, I said to myself, you know something? I really want to challenge myself to be able to work with many different brands Mm -hmm. and work specifically with sales professionals, not just in real estate, but in direct consumer selling processes uh, to really strengthen their their strategies, give them some ideas, and kind of help them take the you know forest from the trees program, and really just hammer into what was around them in terms of opportunity for success. So four years ago, I went out on my own, 
I created Elevate, and I work with not only sales professionals in real estate, but I work with anybody that has any direct uh, consumer face-to-face -face type selling. Oh, so excellent. insurance companies, mortgage companies, attorneys, anybody that is working um, with their sales force to try and develop good sales success. Excellent. Excellent. So since you're coaching sales professionals, it sounds like in a lot of different areas. <laughs> I am. What do you think sales professionals should be doing at this time of year to grow their businesses? You know, it's funny. Yesterday, we got a nor'easter. And yes. you look out the window and you say, oh, my God, look at all that snow. It's on days like that that the top professionals push ahead. Mm -hmm. It's on days like that that they um, see that snow coming down as an opportunity for them to really hone in on their sphere of influence, mm. to look at their databases, look at their past clients, look at their past success. And I always teach, because I teach quite a bit, that um, any type of sales should be like playing the game of dominoes. Yes. You don't do one activity and not follow it up or have a plan on following it up in, in a couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. So for example, yesterday I did three at least three live webinars oh, wow. with sales professionals and then broker owners actually last night to help them to teach their sales professionals what they should be doing this time of year. Mm -hmm. They should be hunkering down in cleaning up their business plans and strengthening their activities. Uh, they should be making those phone calls because there's a lot of people as of yesterday that probably would like to go south for next winter. Yes. <laughs> but how do you know if you don't reach out to them? Right. Constant communication is truly what everybody should be doing right now. Mm -hmm. They need to hear from you. And how do, do you have strategies for how you can implement that into your day? I absolutely do. In fact, I, with my coaching clients and my training clients, and even with my broker owners when I consult them, I often give them just lists, for example, checklists to follow. Mm -hmm. In my training classes, I teach them proven methods and skills that they're not necessarily learning out there. Um, all too often, a lot of sales professionals are looking for that magic bullet, mm -hmm. that magic bullet of how can I buy leads? How, what can I get from my company in order to get more customers? Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, Bob, the customers you need, they're all around you. Right. I think some of your best success is surrounding you and you're just not looking at it and, and working it and you're not identifying that you don't have to go that far to be that successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, so m my advice to people that are out there selling whatever it is that they're selling is start from the inside, start from the core, start from the people that know you, that you have built in true, tried relationships where people are loyal to you and they like you mm -hmm. start there when you start at the outer ends with with people that are strangers for all intents and purposes it takes that much longer to develop a relationship of trust regardless of what you're selling so your feeling on lead lists is probably not the right way to go uh, yeah that i wouldn't yeah. be the girl to go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> endorsing some of those yeah. um let's buy some leads programs I and couldn't agree with you more because uh, for the exact same reason you're saying, mm. why not start with the people you have relationships with already? Well, y you know, true sales professionals, their success comes from the relationships that they already have. They come from the success that they've already built and building it just like building blocks. Mm -hmm. If I uh, sold something to someone and they had a really good experience, then their friends and family how do I get the word out to their friends and family? Because there's trust involved when you sell to people. Mm -hmm. Trust it being established with strangers, quite frankly, is it, it, it's a long, long process. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. What are some of the hallmarks of uh, top sales professionals? Well, top sales professionals to me, um, especially where, where so many people call themselves sales agents, mm -hmm. I don't... Um, trend towards working with sales agents. I trend to work with sales consultants, mm -hmm. people that consult and educate consumers in the process of whatever it is they're selling. So for an example, in real estate, I would prefer to work with a real estate sales consultants. There's a big difference. Agents are transactional in nature. Mm -hmm. 
whatever sales you're in. If you're in that transactional flow where you have to go from one sale to the next sale to the next sale versus being a consultant and educating people and then being known as that go-to person for all things that matter to them. Mm -hmm. Real estate in particular is helping people to get established into their world that they're buying into, into their neighborhoods, into their communities. Are you that community person? Mm -hmm. Are you that problem solver? Are you that connector? The hallmark of a fabulous sales professional is the fact that they're a go-to person that knows so many people that can connect people and bridge gaps between challenges that people have and getting answers and strategies to what needs to happen to fix those challenges. Excellent. So it's really about your network. It's totally about your network. In fact, building, a, as I said before, building a network of strangers is not, it's like the three little pigs. It's like growing a house out of straw versus mm -hmm. growing a house out of brick. Mm -hmm. Your network already is a st established foundation that you could build off of. And I teach pe people to build off of an established foundation. Your network they want to work with you. You just need to make yourself available to them. But it can't be about you. It has to be about them. You need to be that problem solver, that connector person, that go-to resource person for many things. That's why networking is so incredibly powerful. How do you become a better networker? You know, the thing of it is, is you start right where you are. You start mm -hmm. where you live, where you work. You start right around your own environment, your own community. You get to know people. You reach out. Rather than driving away from your community, get to know your community. Get involved. Be Join your boards. All the memberships that so many sales professionals have, they're not leveraging those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Now, certainly, social media has changed networking in a lot of ways. Yes. And <laughs> there's so many people out on LinkedIn, which is one of the most powerful networking uh, social media platforms that's out there, go on to your LinkedIn and learn what other people do. Mm -hmm. It's about educating yourself to be not just selling what it is that you're selling, that, that gadget that you're selling or that house that you're selling or that policy you're selling. Understand what everybody in your network is doing. How do you help them build? Because it comes back to you. When you pay forward, it does come back. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you talk about building your network, it's not just about going to like the Chamber of Commerce meetings or something like that. It's no. it's everything. It's social media. It's face everything. to face. It's it's the people that surround you that, you know, most people know an average of about 285 people. Mm -hmm. That's a statistic. And so do you know what those 285 people do? Do you know what they need? Do you know what makes them successful? How can you plug into their worlds? That's what networking is about. It's about plugging into other professionals and other people's worlds who you know. Now, it's interesting. I, I always say to sales professionals, especially in the real estate, if I went home and talked to your family and I said, who would they recommend in real estate? Are they going to say you? Mm. It, it, do they know what you do? I'll tell you a funny story. I, I hate to tell it, but... <laughs> my my brother said to me years ago, his partner was buying a multi-million dollar house on a country club um, just west of Boston. And I said, well, I didn't know about that. And he said, well, I didn't know you sold in that area. And I, wow. it was a real wake up call for me. And I said, I can sell anywhere in the world because it's not just me selling. I can refer you. I can refer him. I can refer anybody. But, you know, we're not looking beyond ourselves as sales agents. But as a professional sales consultant, that top networker, mm -hmm. we look beyond ourselves and we have more resources than we could ever, ever utilize. Hmm. Very good advice. Can you give us some tips for or the audience some tips on how to become a better sales professional? Well, I, I, first of all, uh, the number one thing y you need to do is you need to be a student of your trade. Mm -hmm. And uh, even myself now, I, I tend to just listen to talk radio in the car and I listen to audio tapes. I listen to motivational tapes. I listen to tapes on selling strategies and practices. You need to become a person that's fully engaged in what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. So some strategies that I would recommend is 
becoming a, a student of your industry. Know your industry. Know the nuances. Everything is constantly changing, especially with social media. Are you a student of your trade? So the other thing I would suggest, too, is if you're not up on great communication skills, that's where you're lacking. Mm -hmm. Every top sales professional is an amazing communicator. Mm. Anyone that you look at that's done very, very well in sales, they know how to communicate because they know how to identify the needs of the person that they're working with. If you're not identifying the needs and the motivation and what makes them tick and what drives them to reaching out to you or for you to be speaking with them, you have to understand how to communicate. Right. Right. That's excellent, excellent advice. How about some common mistakes that you see sales professionals making? It, it, and well, how, to get a, how to get around them, yeah, how to stop them? Well, I, I'll tell you. I think... It, sales agents that are running into problems and I get phone calls and I, I'm driving all over the place going to my meetings and trainings and coaching sessions and I get phone calls from sales professionals all the time. My business is not where I want it. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, well, let's talk about that. The problem is, is those sales agents, as I like to call them, are looking for magic bullets. Mm -hmm. They're scrambling. They're right. scrambling. Number one, they don't have a business plan. They don't have a business plan that they've shared with someone else to hold them accountable. So they're just sailors, if you will, in an open ocean, and they don't know where their destination is. Mm -hmm. They haven't envisioned what success looks like. Nobody asks sales professionals generally what success looks like. And I think there's a little bit of dreaming that's involved when you're creating a business plan. People need to dream as to what that outcome looks like. What do the shores look like for that sailor that's on that aimless trip coming across the ocean? Absolutely. You have to have a little bit of a dream backed up by a lot of hard work. And that hard work is not aimlessly scrambling for magic bullets. Truly, it's not. Great advice. Great advice, Ros Rosemary. So running out of time, uh, if anybody listening is looking to hire you for sales coaching or wants to attend a seminar... Uh, how do they go about getting in touch with you? So sure. the best way to get a hold of me, and, and I give out my, my direct cell phone number, mm -hmm. it's 781-248-6069. You're also welcome to check me out on rosemarykelleher.com, my website. And feel free to go and, and look at that. And if there's something I can do to help you or your organization, your company, I'm happy to do so. I I love seeing success come together. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to give out your number one more time. It's Rosemary Kelleher, 781-248-6069. And it's Elevate Sales Coaching and Seminars. Thank you for joining us on the show Thank today, Thank you, Rosemary. Bob. Thank you. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this. Mm -hmm. 